So Adobe just released their generative AI tool for Photoshop and honestly it did actually shock everyone. You see this AI tool that was released surprised because we didn't think that we were going to be getting this early and honestly the results that people have been getting have been quite surprising. Now the thing is is that we didn't expect Adobe Firefly to be out of beta just yet so this has shocked everyone because the results and the actual quality of the work that it's being able to do is quite high quality. So in this online tutorial, I'll show you exactly what the tool is, how you're going to be able to access it and the quick tutorial on why this is such a big deal. So this is Photoshop and Adobe Firefly. Now this tool that we're looking at is called Generative Fill. So essentially what this tool allows you to do is it allows you to generate anything with a text prompt. But the thing that separates this from Mid Journey is that this tool is combining images into one and it does it using AI. Now it does it very, very well because as you can see right here, you're going to see that they're able to actually change the background and also add reflections. So it's not just something that simply uses AI in a very trashy and very small way. It actually integrates the capabilities to produce stunning visual images. Here you can see it's able to expand this image by using the generative AI feel to add reflections on a frozen lake. Now later I'll show you exactly how you can do this and why this is so cool but here you can also see it's able to generate the northern lights and it actually integrates it into a very very nice landscape. Now the reason this is such a big tool is because Photoshop essentially is Photoshop and if you don't know what that means Photoshop has been one of the tools where most people are trying to manipulate their images and this is going to be saving people tons and tons of time. So let's get into how you actually access this, how you can actually use this and some of the quick things that you can actually do with this. One of the first things that you need to do is you need to go ahead and when you open up Photoshop you're going to see that there is this new thing called the Photoshop beta. It's going to prompt you to download it and once you do you're going to be able to use it. Now if you don't see the Photoshop beta essentially open up your creative cloud and then scroll over to this right here where it says beta apps in the bottom left hand corner. There you should see a strange Photoshop icon and just simply download the beta. Then once you've downloaded the beta you should see this right here where it says try now and once you load into Photoshop all you have to do is then use the object selection tool. So let's head over to the desktop to show you how this tool really works. So now something I do quickly want to address is that many people are comparing this tool to Photoshop's old tool okay and this is not like the content aware tool which some people might get confused with. So quickly if you use this tool right here on the left hand side you can see that there's this little jagged box which is the rectangular marquee tool. Essentially this is the tool where where the generative fill box is going to be prompted. Now, if you even right click, you can see that there are two things. There's the content aware fill and there's the generative fill. The generative fill is much, much better, which is why people are saying that this tool is absolutely amazing. So I'm gonna show you what the content aware tool does. And then I'm gonna show you what the generative fill does. And when you see the differences, you're gonna understand why the Photoshop community and why everyone is online saying that this is pretty crazy. So let's do the content aware fill. And essentially this just uses the original content to fill it up and you can see here, this is what you get. Now, of course, this in some aspects can be used, but it doesn't really look that good. So we're going to do, go ahead and use that selection one more time. And then this time I'm going to use the AI fill. So we're going to use the generative fill and I'm just going to click here. And because I don't want to actually generate anything, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click just generate. So I don't actually want to put anything there and I'm going to click generate. Now, the reason I've overlapped this right here is because it needs the data from this in order to just simply expand it. So I probably should have, you know, introduced a more of the data, but we're going to see how this takes. Now, one thing that you do need to understand is that if you are using this tool, you also do need to make sure that you are online. If you aren't online, you won't be able to access this tool. Now, for some reason, it didn't actually generate the entirety of that area. So I'm going to go ahead and try this one more time. Just like that, you can see that this generative AI tool is absolutely incredible. So right there, you can see that this was an image that I actually got from Mid Journey. As you know, Mid Journey's images are typically 1080 by 1080, which is a standard Instagram size. The only problem here is, of course, that in Mid Journey, you can and of course change the pixels to expand the image but let's say for example you forgot to use the specific prompt to get that image of the certain width and height you can then of course come into photoshop and use this specific tool to then expand this image now this is actually really cool you can see that from the content aware tool this is just essentially using the patterns to simply extend the image and it doesn't really understand the data but with ai you're able to understand exactly what is going on in the image and thus get a clear representation as you can see right here this essentially expands the image very very quickly now that's not the only thing you can do you can of course add many different things here so one thing i'm going to try and do here is i'm going to add a bear in the water so i'm going to add a bear i'm just going to click a bear 
and then I'm going to click generate. So I want to see if it's able to generate a bear. And I'm pretty sure this is going to work because I've tried this on many different images and I'm pretty sure I figured out how to get this to work pretty smooth. So here you can see it adds a bear along to the image and it does look pretty good. But I got to be honest, Adobe's image generation on certain things such as people and animals isn't the complete best, but it is good at generating stuff such as, you know, maybe an anchor or maybe a bench or maybe a chair. So essentially stationary items and non moving things are definitely the best because essentially the thing about Adobe, although these images aren't going to be as good as mid journeys originals what adobe does excel in is ai art privacy rules and essentially that means that all these images that we trained adobe's software on essentially so over time this stuff will improve but i do think that if you were just trying to create something really cool this is definitely there now of course if you don't like this you can just click this button again and you can click regenerate now why this is also cool as well is that you can flip through these many different generations to see which one of them you like the most so i might not like this one that much and i do realize that a bear is quite hard to do so i'm gonna go ahead and just click regenerate and see what it's able to do yeah so far photoshop like we said does seem to struggle with the bears but if you are just using this for artistic purposes this is definitely good so what i'm gonna now gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and expand this entire image and show you what this looks like yeah after messing around this is what the expanded image looks like you can see right here this is the original from mid journey and then of course i've added the right and then of course i've added the left right there and this actually looks pretty pretty realistic i would never be able to tell that this was essentially fused if someone's able to ask me essentially where the image was fused I might be able to tell that the house is a little bit off there, but at the same time, it is very, very hard to see that to the untrained eye. So yeah, this is what it can be used for. Now I'm gonna show you some really cool tips and tricks as to how you can actually use this to build an image essentially with not that much stuff in it. So this is an image that we just got from Mid Journey that I literally just generated in a couple of seconds, but I wanted to show you how you can actually, you know, essentially change this really, really quickly. So another thing that you can do as well with this generative AI tool is you can essentially get rid of stuff. So if you wanted to do generative fill, you could essentially what I typed in there is I just typed in remove and you can see right here, it's just simply removed the poster on the left hand wall. So this is something that you can easily do. In fact, if I can just move this bar down, I'm not sure why the bar is just right there. There we go. So essentially I just typed in remove and you can see right here that I simply just removed that. I could do that on that side and I can simply remove these images. Now, of course you could always say that, Hey, I could just do this with the generative AI tool. And some of you that aren't familiar with Photoshop, don't know about this um, normal fill, which is essentially just content aware fill. And you simply just click that and it pretty much disappears. Now you might be thinking this is no different. Trust me, it is because I can promise you that there are many times where this doesn't work that well. It only works this well because this is a clean image, but I'm going to show you what you can also do. So let's say, for example, you wanted to, um, in fact, let's go ahead and remove this as well. Let me just uh, do remove generative fill. And then I'm going to just do remove all of this stuff. Uh, now that that's removed, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add some plants on the left and on the right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just highlight this and I'm going to just add, let's say I just want to add a plant pot. Let's just put, so I want there to be some plants on either side. So you can see right there, it actually added the plant pot with realistic reflections, which is actually really, really nice. So you can see right here, it actually reflects off the floor. Now, what I do like about Photoshop is the variations because maybe I wanted one that looked fake. Maybe I wanted one that looked like that. It definitely does look really realistic. Now, over here, what I'm also going to do is after merging these layers, is I'm going to then, of course, add maybe some white flowers. I'm going to click generative fill. I'm going to set some white. So you can see on the left hand side, I've also added some more flowers. And then the reason that this is also so incredible and that most people will take for granted is that you can see that if I zoomed into these flowers, okay, and these plants, the thing is that even if you got an image and copied and pasted it and put it into Photoshop and you might be thinking this isn't that big of a deal. Guys, understand that these kind of shadows to perfect these, it takes a very long time. Beginners can't do this. And to get an image, okay, where you can crop it out, okay, and do all of this perfectly, it takes a very long time, okay? And to get these shadows where it's all perfectly done and you have the shadows just like that, so it actually looks realistic, it really does take a lot of time because you have to match the lighting of this, then you have to match the lighting of that. Trust me when I say, guys, this is a big shakeup to the entire industry because a lot of people are now going to be using this. Now, what's also cool about this is that you can actually change the entire composition of this image. Now, you can see before we started with a McLaren with some posters on the wall, but now we don't have any of that stuff. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to 
change the background so i'm gonna put this as to open background sky so right here you can see that we've now added this door so we've opened up the back of the door now of course the top of the card does look a little bit weird but at the same time this is just photoshop and if you didn't want to completely change that you can essentially what you can do is you can just select the image and then of course you can change the background so i didn't really do that in the most perfect way but of course the different ways that you can do it so for example right here you can click select subject just like this then essentially what you can do is you can just undo this just like that and of course you can simply edit around this so of course now that we've got our mclaren in this image right here we can essentially add more stuff now something that i did see online as well was i saw someone that added essentially a rug underneath their image or their car and i thought it was really cool so for example what i could really do here is i could put um a black rug and then of course you can see right here that we actually were able to add this rug right underneath the car now what was really cool about this is that it actually did add the right images and something that you might be thinking is why did it mess up the plants well i didn't actually crop out the plants so of course it's going to interpret that in whichever way it sees fit so my honest question to you is how are you going to be using this do you think this is going to change the game personally as someone who uses photoshop on a daily basis i think this will literally be used by almost everyone if not everyone because this is a large majority of people's time but let me know what you think in the comment section below i think this is a game changer especially with the way the shadows integrate but until next time we'll see you in the next ai update